I went to the SS Rex. That was a gambling boat out in Santa Monica. And uh, I worked for the mob. Tony Cadero, he was a mobster from the West Coast. He owned that boat. But it wasn't all fun and games. The future Chief Justice of the United States, Earl Warren, spent years engaged in a battle to close down the offshore gambling ships. He launched a naval attack upon those with, uh, uh, with uh, some uh, state officials. Uh, he got uh, repulsed with his first assault with water hoses from the, uh, at the Rex, as it was called, the uh, casino, but he finally uh, shut them down. Finally, Fornero II would make his way to Las Vegas. Well, he built the Stardust, and then he died in the desert in shooting dice. Rumors of syndicate or mob control, arson, threats, and even murder have always surrounded the people and business of gambling. Maybe because beneath it all, it's still the business of money. A lot of people misunderstand it. Gangsters and gamblers are the same. They're not. Gangsters take care of the gamblers. They get a piece of the action and their protection, and they look after them. Gangsters, a guy that'll whack you and pop you. I mean, that's, that's talk from gangsters. You see it in the movies and all this. But they'll take you out. They'll put you in the Detroit River, tie a slot machine to your leg, and you're gone. You know what I mean? They'll lock you in a trunk, give you a couple air hoses. That's the name of the story. But there, you have to be associated with them people. Those people. It's a touchy subject and one that even today, decades later, people are reluctant to talk about. It's not, however, that difficult to connect the dots from the illegal clubs straight to the Las Vegas Strip. My one uncle, his name is Sam, became a big, big man in the Cleveland Syndicate. With, he was partners with Mo Dalitz, which was a big man, even out here. Mo Dalitz uh, was uh, born of Jewish immigrant parents from Eastern Europe. His family operated a laundry in Ann Arbor, Michigan. They moved to Cleveland. He became involved in bootlegging. He became very much involved in gambling in Newport, Kentucky. Uh, and he moved out to Las Vegas in the late 1940s, became very much involved in the uh, ownership of the Stardust, which had strong mob connections back to Chicago, and also the Desert Inn. And so big men from different parts of the country and different backgrounds found common ground in taking their shot at the American dream. In all cities, the mob is connected. They need them. Do you understand? Then they got into uh, the gambling business around Cleveland, Cincinnati, Newport, Kentucky, Havana, Cuba, uh, Arkansas, all over and out here. For those who dared speak out against gambling and gangsters, they didn't do it for long. Father Reed Coffin in Detroit. But he used to knock the mobs out of them. They blew his church up. And they shot Jerry Buckley, which was, a, which was a commentator, and he knocked the rackets all the time. And the gangsters mostly. It wasn't the gamblers that did it. It was the, the racket, the hoodlums, the, the mobsters. They whacked him. Jerry Buckley shot him in front of the whole, Hotel Detroiter. Of course, a crucial key to the success and survival of America's secret casinos was a strict code of secrecy. You zip her up. Don't see, you don't hear. And you bop, you don't see that. You gotta dummy up. There was also a gangster code of law set up for proper behavior. The first thing that you were taught in this business if you were an old timer was integrity. I'm saying they were both. They were gentlemen and they were mob involved. My uncle, was part owner. He was uh, in, he was involved with the with the other owners in the Detroit area, the the Purples, and of course uh, some of our uh, Italian brethren who were also involved in Detroit. And they, uh, strangely enough, in in Detroit was probably the only city in the entire United States were the various groups of gentlemen who were involved in gaming and other scurrilous activities never had a confrontation. They, these kids grew up together. 